finally, it comes to our last session of this two-day virtual conference. We're very delighted to have Daryl Wijaya from Creo Engine to share his inspiring insights about envisioning a true sandbox. So Daryl has been a gamer since he was little. In 2016, he became a game developer and started producing indie games. His game circulated on the internet and received many prizes from gaming communities. In 2021, he released a game called The Revenant Prince on Steam. And in the same year, he helped co-fund his first blockchain game company, Creo Angie. So let's pass the time to Darrow. Hey guys, hello. I guess I'm the last session today, huh? This is a very, a lot of pressures on me. But you know what? I'm just going to do my best and hopefully you guys like what you see. So, you know, my name is Daryl. I'm the, the, the co-founder and CTO of the Career Engine ecosystem, you know, and yeah, I'm an indie game developer. I love making indie games. I personally am an RPG lover myself, and I've been making indie games since I was in college in America. I studied finance and accounting, and I also run and manage our studio back home in Jakarta, Indonesia. And, you know, this is who we are. So we really want to talk about the idea of what a sandbox is, right? Which I believe that, you know, it's not that game that Animoca made. I mean, I think a sandbox is in, in essence a collaboration between everybody in this in this space, in this industry, so to speak. So, you know, one way to do that is through interoperability. And Creo Play, or should I say the project we're creating, is enabling developers to actually use their assets, their NFTs, across different games. Now, the implications are pretty good. So let's move on to the next slide and let's talk about this idea. So what is interoperability, right? And how does it help create a true sandbox? Well, it's quite simple. You know, assets are only good in the games they're in, right? They're only useful for players in the games they're in. But what if you could actually use those assets across different worlds? And what if those worlds could actually buy into your assets? So not only you, you'll be able to sell your assets or use your assets with other players in one game, but you could use those assets across different types of games. And, you know, that's this idea is what Creo Play is aiming to create overall. And we want to create a platform, essentially, that really not just only aggregates users or developers, but really just creates commodities and gives NFTs a lot more power, meaning that NFTs are useful across different worlds. And NFTs itself have more, in, in technical terms, more utility, which means that developers could essentially find a lot of value in interoperating their assets across different games. Of course, in our platform, it doesn't mean they should actually do it, you know. Now, moving on to the next slide. We do have a lot of things going on. And, you know, I think it's good. So, oh, there we go. There's two types of interoperability types, right? No pun intended. But essentially, an NFT could actually be in game, visually in game, and actually help out gamers or players of that particular game. But another more universal sense is enabling an NFT to actually be intrinsically there, where they're actually not visible in game, but they're actually helping players by, you know, boosting them in several different games. So an example is a pet cat. Well, guess what? Now this digital pet cat can essentially give you a lot more power in five different games, meaning that that particular NFT in, in question could essentially be useful because it's so widely sought after by five different communities in five different games. Now, that's beautiful because this is what creates a sandbox where NFTs are now useful and now are applicable across different worlds. And that essentially is a first step to creating a true sandbox where it's not just one, not just a singular medium that governs everything, but rather it is a plethora or a myriad of NFTs of different types going across different worlds, you know, communities creating commodities or utilizing commodities from different games. This kind of beautiful dynamic is what we're trying to go after as a platform. And uh, this is what I truly believe could really work in this metaverse space. So moving on to the next slide, as you can see here, we want to give more power to developers, right? Which I think it's crucial. If you look at Web2 platforms, you know, I think they're pretty cruel in a way where they, they take a lot of revenue cuts from developers. You know, I've been in a game myself, a developer myself, you know, I make a thousand dollars. I only, I only get like what, $500 <laughs> after taxes and revenue cuts. So, you know, it's quite cruel. Honestly, I think that with cryptocurrencies and blockchain, you know, and a platform like ours, developers could really make use of getting the most out of their products, right? Which I think is essential because at the end of the day, you know, with their NFTs being interoperated across different worlds, imagine that these NFTs earn them royalties. So if players use NFTs and actually cash out with these NFTs, well, guess what? Developers might get a cut 
and imagine the thousand of words worlds using this one nfts and you could imagine you know developers and their assets could really be useful and you know it could be very beneficial to developers who especially create nfts for their games and we want to encourage developers to do this because you know if one nft could be useful across you know many different worlds then why not and if several nfts could have their own little niche ecosystem where they are interoperated across different games and groups that's even better because now these NFTs won't just be silly pictures. You know, they'll be actually commodities, tools that could actually help players benefit from these NFTs in this in their respective games. And the best part is that, you know, developers could really collaborate with each other in, in a much intimate manner in our platform, meaning that, you know, with this in mind, developers can now essentially find ways to be creative with their NFTs. Because, you know, this really just transcends the boundaries of, you know, designing video games where now games are not just a singular world trapped in a box. No, they are part of many worlds and it could actually help all, all these other worlds as well. So moving on, you know, I do believe nothing we have to talk about in the next slide is, you know, logistics, right? I think it is impossible to connect a thousand games at once, meaning that there'll be ecosystems that have their own sub ecosystems, meaning that ecosystems maybe have five to 10 different games in one ecosystems. And one NFT could be useful across these five or 10 different games. So we want developers to create their own e ecosystems with their, with their friends or fat or with their develop other, other developers, so to speak, which we really are trying to emphasize, you know, as, as a project. So moving on to the next slide, you know, what we want to also talk about is opportunities, right? Which I think now, with developers creating their own ecosystems and they have their own communities all congregated with each other, then now we can create DAOs where communities can actually make votes on their little sub ecosystems, like saying, they, oh, I want this to do this. Oh, I want this to do that. And I want games to do this. And in this speculative industry, we want to give, we want to give people a lot more control of what their assets can do and what their token, the, to, what the tokens they hold can do for them in these particular ecosystems. So moving on, you know, one thing I want to talk about is ownership, right? Where I think at the end of the day, you know, a lot of Web2 platforms give a lot too much power to developers where now assets that are controlled by developers are, you know, users at the mercy of developers. But with interoperability, you know, at the end of the day, the assets are yours and they could help you across different worlds. So be it. You have control over that particular aspect. So now if a game dies and that asset use has still exists from that particular game, well, those assets could be commodities because they're from a game that doesn't exist anymore, meaning that the hard work you pour into this one asset could be could be applicable across different worlds. And that's something we're trying to do as a project overall. So moving on, you know, one thing we want to talk about is opportunity, right? And I think we're trying to create a platform for, for the entirety of Asia, where I think in Asia, there's a lot of people coming out of the woodwork when, when they make video games. So we want to give developers exposure and really more, more added value to their products, right? So moving on, another thing I want to talk about is, you know, I think an important thing to talk about is a transition, this great market transition, which I think is applicable to this whole sandbox idea, right? So there's a lot of Web3 games coming out, and that's beautiful because guess what? You know, people from Web2 games will likely play these Web3 games to make money and to get benefits from these games. And what better way to really be a part of this grand, vast sandbox where they have access to these games? And this, this particular sandbox will tell you, oh, this, is this game good? Is it making money or is it good for you? Can you trust the developers? All these little things, all these information data points that make a great difference in how people are treated in this whole metaverse. So it's time really that we collaborate with the developers and we collaborate with, with tool uh, creators to really create a great and safe sandbox of multiple visual mediums, which I think is beautiful because at the end of the day, you know, Imagine an open world full of different games and these assets being useful across these different games. I think this transition marks the beginning of that in particular. So moving on, another thing I'd like to emphasize is, you know, just imagine, right? A world where games are just all intertwined and your investments are not going to waste because if a game dies, those assets could be transcended across, their, across different games. And your time and your achievements really contributing to more to more intimate depth in this whole sandbox, right? And this is interesting because I think this really, this whole idea of a sandbox is, you know, how far is far, you know, and how much can it really happen? And it's so vast and beautiful that I think people are willing to give it a chance to explore. 
you know, and I think this is a time for really for all of us to, you know, give this industry a chance and really figure out how we could benefit from it and how we could benefit others with it as well. So moving on, you know, at the end of the day, we have to stress one thing out that's very important, which is collaboration. I think a lot of developers that, that I personally met are very hell-bent in out-competing their competitors, which I think is wrong. I think it's a question about how we could synergize with each other better. Although games are drastically different in, in medium or media, right? It doesn't mean these games could benefit each other in some way, right? So at the end of the day, I think it's time we figure out how to collaborate with each other. And why not do it now? And this is the time to do it. With NFTs being transferred across different chains or being applicable across different worlds, collaboration has never been more intimate and more reasonable than ever before. So moving on, you know, at the end of the day, right? The, the next slide, please. I'm so sorry. I didn't say that. The journey won't be easy. Right. And that, you know, and people will always find a way to break each other apart. And nobody knows what's true, what's reasonable anymore. Right. But at the end of the day, you know, with our product coming out, Creo Play, our platform, you could finally come, you can see that come to light where things will be secure, safe, and information will be readily available for you to try out and to consume. So, you know, even if the journey won't be easy, I think collaboration and being all intertwined this one big beautiful sandbox is what I truly believe is the future of the metaverse. So moving on, bear with me. Get to know us. This is actually a slide from our expo. So that concludes my little presentation. You know, this is me from Creo Engine. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Creo Engine, Daryl Wijaya. So thank you for listening to my little presentation. So if you have any questions and you know want answers, I'd be more than happy to elaborate further. You just have to type it in the uh, little box, right? So yeah, let's do a Q and A. Said, well, before I go, guys, Emily asked me a question: What will be the potential of gaming involvement in the involvement in the future? Well, I think that you know, young children will now play video games to make their parents money and buy groceries for their parents. You know, so I think that's going to happen in Asia, and it's happening right now. So if you're asking for a, a, a question of evolution, I think the young youth of this today's society will really benefit the economy they're in by playing these play turn games. And, you know, they could help families with blockchain technology. Well, guess what? Blockchain has fulfilled its purpose of being a well, a tool of welfare. So, yeah, hopefully that helps answer the question. If that's the case, then I think that's all for me. Thank you so much, Darrow. All right. If that's the case, I bid you adieu. And thank you for having me. Thank you. God bless. <laughs>